Hey guys, this is Patrick Freeman here in Chongqing, China. Today is February 27th. The time is now 2.04 p.m. Uh, what would I like to talk about today? Number one, I'm going to share with you a text from my brother, Keenan, who lives in California. He is a CFO for a health insurance system there, and I had asked him about, uh, you know, if there were any cases in his area, and he kind of gave me his response and, and it actually additional information that I think you would find uh, of interest. Uh, the second thing is I want to talk about some news and some pictures and videos that Tsui Tsui sent me of some things that have happened within Wuhan and also within the Chongqing area that, you know, will give you an idea of how the Chinese authorities, more in particular, the Chinese police officers are handling public behavior. And you will find this very interesting and, and also kind of slightly entertaining as to what they're doing. Having said that, let's get into my brother's text. So how this text came about, uh, I sent him a, on Tuesday at 7.50 p.m., I sent him a text saying, are you seeing any cases within your hospital system? His response was no. And then he says, today California had its first case with unknown primary in Solano County, west of Sacramento. And he goes on to talk about a couple of other things, but then he has a little bit longer text that I'm actually going to read. I don't want to paraphrase it because I want to make sure this information is, is relayed to you accurately. So it starts out, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention announced on Wednesday night that a person in California who tested positive for coronavirus may be the first case of community spread in the United States. This person did not recently travel out of the country or come into contact with anyone infected with a coronavirus known as COVID-19 or coronavirus. The case was detected, this is in quotes, detected through the U.S. public health system, the CDC said, and, quotes, picked up by astute clinicians. The CD said that this could be an, end quotes, instance of community spread of COVID-19, end quote, which means the source of infection is unknown, but also acknowledged that, quote, the patient may have been exposed to a return to traveler who was infected, end quote. Lawrence Gostin, director of, of the World Health Organization Collaborating Center on National Global Health Law, told the Los Angeles Times this, quote, is the first signal that we could be having silent transmission in the community. It probably means there are many more cases out there, and it probably means that the individual has infected others, and now it's a race to try to find out who that person has infected, end quote. There are 60 cases of COVID-19 in the United States. So you may have heard this information, but uh, from a health professional standpoint, I thought you, again, might find this of interest. You know, God forbid that it's a community spread because, you know, people like my brother who are in the, in the, in the industry, uh, Dr. John Campbell, who I've mentioned many times in my videos, there's a lot of professionals out there that really talk about the seriousness of community spread. So uh, just keep your eye on that. All right, regarding the numbers, coronavirus cases, 82,183. Number of deaths, 2,804. Recovered, 32,888. And if you look at the total cases graph here in blue on the left, uh, you'll see that it, it's starting to level out. I've said this before. Uh, I'm still cautiously optimistic as to where this will go. Um, but very interesting to see that and, you know, slightly positive. One thing that I wanted to point out before I go into some of the information about Tsui Tsui is under current trends and analysis, the first bullet point, and this is very important, there are now more new cases occurring every day outside of China than within. What I want to do is kind of explain culturally what I've seen, what I've experienced, what I've gathered here as to why that is happening here in China as opposed to the West. And I think it may be the culture and the way the citizens respond to the government. I believe it's going to be that that is going to save this country from this virus. I'm, I might be wrong, but what my, I fear is how the perception of Western countries, individuals, citizens towards their government may cause this thing to go out of control. And I'll explain what I mean by this. And this is personal opinion. And I think it's something that people need to pay attention to and think about 
especially if this virus starts to go wild in your respective countries. So just a couple of days ago, Tway Tway told me that she was informed by the school that they would not be going back. So she's, a, she's an art teacher. They would not be going back to school until April 24th. So today is February 27th. So that's another two months, making it a total of three months of isolation. Now, before I started filming today, I asked her, because what happens is information here changes all the time. They'll make an announcement and then they'll retract it and then put some updated information in there. So before I started, just to make sure, I asked her, is that still the case? Is it April 24th? And they were just notified this morning that it's not April 24th. It's now March 27th that they're going back to school. So again, today's February 27th. That's a month from now. I think that's great. I mean, I would prefer it to be longer, but you know, two months of isolation, I think is, is pretty conservative. And I'm thankful for that for this reason. As you know, I'm a teacher. I teach at a private school, teach at night, and teach on the weekends. I don't teach at a local public school. And I wanna tell you about the, the culture of the country when it comes to education and how much they value it and how important it is. And based on my personal opinion, I would say the most important thing in this country is the communist government and the family. Number two, I would put those, those two that I mentioned as number one, number two is education. Education is pushed, and I'll tell you why, the number of people that live in this country is at about 1.3, 1.4 billion people. A ton of people live here, which means there's gonna be a lot of uh, competition for people who wanna get decent jobs. So there's a focus on getting the best education that you possibly can get. And they're very much like the people in the United States and that they will, and it's, it's kind of hard to own two homes. You kind of have to get permission. I don't know the exact rules, but people will buy homes in the districts where the schools are really good so that they can send their kids uh, to those schools. I'll probably do a, a full episode on that. But they do the same things that a lot of Western countries do with their children to make sure they get the best education. But even more so, they go to school all the time. I've never seen, you know, coming from the United States, we go to school from 8.30 to 3.30, and then the rest of the time it's sports, socializing, and just having fun, and no school on the weekends. Uh, for most kids here, completely different. You go to school from 8.30 to about 2.30 or 3 o'clock. You've got a little bit of a break, but then additional schooling starts up at the private schools or private tutoring at the home. The school that I teach at, I teach English. There are other subjects being taught like science, math. I mean, you name it. They, they have every possible subject that a child can study and uh, a subject that the parents want that particular child to focus on. So not only are they going to school pretty much all day, they are going to school several hours during the night. That's Monday, Wednesday, excuse me, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Well, what happens on Saturday? They're going to school. A lot of times the public schools, they have to go until maybe like 11, but then there's private schools like mine where we teach all day long. And a lot of my classes are two hours long each. And I might have four hours of that per day on Saturday and Sunday. For a lot of children, they could be going to school seven days a week with some, you know, half days mixed in there, but still going seven days a week. Most of them are going probably six days a week. Now, if a parent doesn't have the money to send a child to school, uh, to a private school, they will actually either get a second job if they can, uh, or they'll work extra hours so that they can afford to send their child to a private school. I mean, it, there's a huge, huge focus on that. Now, that's, this is kind of a, a very scenic route to making a point. And the point is, school is so important that even if you're sick, you're still going to go to school. I've had countless times where I've had children walk in and you could visibly see that they were sick, that they had a temperature. And many times I've asked them to leave because I didn't, you know, they looked like they were suffering and I didn't want the other children to get sick and I didn't want to get sick. So I would send them home in our school. And the great thing about the, the school that I work for is they're very supportive on that, that they give us permission to, you know, have a child leave if they are sick. It's and I know this happens in Western countries where kids show up, the occasional kid. But I will say it's worse here. They they like I don't care if you're on your deathbed, you're going to school. And the government recognizes that, and I think that's why they've 
delayed the start of school for so long and are doing you know classes via video so i think that that act of extending it is really going to help this country and i think one of the reasons why you're seeing less cases here is because we're not going back to school and i, I applaud them for that all right so i think you get my point on that the other point and actually this is a video uh, actually this is a picture of uh, some individuals, I don't know exactly how many, but you can tell there's probably, you know, maybe 25 or 30 in this picture. But it was a sunny day a couple of days ago here in Chongqing, and these people showed up to the park. I mean, they've been locked up all day long, and it hadn't been sunny, and they thought would, that particular day would have been a good day to go to the park. So they did. Well, the police force showed up, and the police force really got after all these individuals for coming to the park endangering other people endangering the police force and they actually made them sit down and read an instructional book on how to prevent the spread of the virus and at the end of it they asked these individuals to repeat the bullet points that they had just read and that they couldn't leave they couldn't return home until they were able to repeat all the bullets i mean very and almost it, it sounded like they were tr kind of treating them like children and I, w I will I'll have to side on the police force side because in although they may not have handled it like they would have in the West, this is a very serious thing. And when you get people, groups of people who could potentially have the virus, this thing could just take off again. And the police force was doing their job. Again, they may not have handled it like they would have in the West, but they reprimanded them and they made them read these bullet points and then they made them go home. And this brings me to another point that I want to make. And it's really, I, I want it to be an interactive thing because I want to see if my thinking is right. Because again, this is a perspective that many of you don't have here and how the Chinese respond to government authority. I mean, the government here is kind of like the mama bear we're going to take care of you, don't worry, but it's kind of like the mama bear. They treat, can treat them like children sometimes, but they, they behave and they listen to the Chinese government. But if this were to take place in the United States, what do you think would happen? I mean, if, if this happened at a park and you had you know, 25, 50 people at a park and it was kind of a voluntary isolation and they showed up to the, the park and then the police force showed up and made them do what the Chinese force did here, you'd probably have a little mini rebellion. And I think that's that to me is concerning because that could possibly happen in the United States or other countries that are democratic, that are free. Uh, where people, you might just have people saying, you're infringing on my rights to do whatever the hell I want. Well, in a situation like this, you know, you, the only right that you have is to do what the government says and stay at home, protect yourself, protect your family, and protect those within your neighborhood and your community. And I'm, I'm just afraid that we're going to have quite a few individuals have this kind of, you know, you're infringing on my freedoms and all that kind of stuff. You're not going to tell me what to do because it did happen. And I can't find the article. It was actually on Ebola back in 2012, 2013, that there was an individual that came back from Africa and they were told to self-isolate. And I don't know how many days it was. I think it was maybe 14 days. Let's just say it was 14 days. Well, they actually ended up getting caught going to the grocery store or some kind of an event before the 14 days or before the isolation period was up. And they kind of got irritated with the press and the public for getting after them, getting after them for getting out. And I got mad at them. I'm like, you need to stay in that damn house for the 14 days. And I can't find the article. If somebody can find that article, let me know and I'll post it in the next video. But that is my fear. You're going to see people doing whatever the hell they want and the virus possibly spreading more aggressively because people aren't listening in china they listen they do listen and i know people you know depending on what side of the fence you you sit on people will condemn that but i will say in this situation the way the government works that's the reason why we're seeing less cases here than you you're starting to see in outside the countries because people are obedient and they listen to the government i think that's another reason why you haven't seen a shortage of food. Uh, there have been some grocery stores that have had 
uh, a run on them. Uh, probably more like in Wuhan. There have been a couple of grocery stores where you've seen some shelves cleaned out. For the most part, most of the stores are being well stocked. I've been five or six times. You've seen the videos. You've seen that they're well stocked. And the government is, you know, reinforcing that mama bear attitude that we're taking care of you. People are seeing that they are getting food, that they are being fed, and that they are being taken care of. That's why, you know, going to talking about the United States or a Western country, I think you'll see more grocery stores have runs on them because people have less trust in the government than they have here. Just some observations. And again, these are observations based on what I'm seeing here, a 16, 17 months of being here. And I can tell you, there are other individuals, other expats that feel the same way about this. But I, I just think it's something that you guys need to pay attention to and keep an eye out for. And maybe, you know, I don't know how you get this to government authorities and politicians, but it's something they need to pay attention to because that attitude could creep into the seriousness of the situation. And you might, you're going to have those you're going to have those goobers that get out and do stupid stuff more so than you would have here. Uh, you're going to have them get out and endanger the public and possibly spread the virus more so in other countries than you are here. So as always, guys, thank you very much for your encouraging messages, your prayers, and just know that it's coming back to you through prayer. So thanks again, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.